awesome. We're recording. So I'll continue letting some people in, but we're going to kick this off right away because Amy's a very busy gal and we want to respect her time, right? So I appreciate everybody being on time here and um, being excited about this call. So um, I'm super stoked to invite Amy. I reached out to her last month um, and she had just told me how excited she was for 2021. Amy's on my front line. She's been with me since dang near day one. Um, and she, I needed that. I needed somebody to tell me how excited they were because I was kind of in a funk. And so she kind of picked me up off the floor and she probably doesn't even know that she did. And so I said, Amy, you are the one who is just like so pumped about 2021. Like, will you please jump on? the first call of the year, really kick us off strong and just kind of share your story because most of you know of Amy, but you might not know her story and where she's been. And it's very unique. Um, she's a double Zaya executive with Zaya and she's been with us um, two years, just over two years, right? Yep. So she's going to share that with you guys tonight. Um, <clears throat> It is really hard to get on here and talk in front of people. So give her love in the chat, ask questions in the chat, um, and we'll be sure to get to the questions. But I'm going to turn it over to Amy because I might start crying if not, and I'm not even a crier. So I'm super stoked. It's all you, Ames. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I've been this nervous for a call in some time. So um I'll go ahead and get started. For those of you who don't know me, obviously, my name's Amy Peters. Um, I literally wrote down exactly what you said, Erica, from the get-go <laughs> um, and how you reached out to me last month. And you're just like, hey, girl, like, I love your excitement for this next year. You know, would you consider, but, you know, in the Erica way, I hate to ask you this, but like, would you consider sharing your story? I feel like a lot of people don't know about it. Um, and at first I was like, ah, and then I was like, okay, yeah, duh, let's do it. Um, so that is where, what we're going to talk about today is a little bit about my story, but before I jump into that, I wanted to lead off with, um, kind of like a reflection question that I want to ask you at the start, um, of this and then revisit it towards the end. Um, so here it goes. When you see, um, somebody that you look up to that's successful in this business or in life or whatever it is, do you think one of the best ways to look at life is to look at it like a game of chess or a game of Tetris? And I want you to think about that for a second and throughout this time together, and we'll revisit it at the end about what I think. So a little bit about me. Um, yes, I'm a double Zai executive, which like, I mean, I can't even believe I can even say that to tell you the truth. Um, and I um, started in at the very end of September of 2018. I think I was Erica's like third rep. Um, but before I go into there, I wanted to just share a little bit about um, my love for the very first quarter of every single year. Um, last year, if, um, January this time last year, 365 days ago, I was a senior director with a team of 119 beautiful souls. Today, I'm a double Zai executive with a team of 673 teammates. Okay. I don't say that to come from a place of bragging. I come from a place of complete humility and how much can happen in one year. Not only one year, but guys, I'm on year two. So think about that right now, about where you're at and what can happen in not only one year in this business, but two. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. Now let's really, really re rewind and learn a little bit about my story. So um, I signed at the end of September of 2018. I'm pretty sure I was Erica's third rep. And at that time, literally, like I remember um, signing and joining Zaya. I don't even think Zaya Fire had a Facebook page. Maybe it did. Um, and Erica's like, thanks, Amy Peters. I just hit senior rep. 
um, as I sign. And I was like, dang, like this, like this is easy. Like people just sign and they rank advance, right? Like how cool. Like I was super, super stoked to join this brand new company. I had not tried a lick of Zaya on. I actually, um, I saw Heather on here. Heather Leto is a good friend of mine and fellow therapist from Michigan. And she was hosting a party for Erica. Um, and I just so happened to scroll past it and I was on activewear and I was like, dang, that's really, really cool. And I was really, this is beyond my story, but I was really looking for something for me. I was a stay at home mom exclusively at that point. And I am a Enneagram three wing two. I am a doer. I like to accomplish things. And being a stay at home mom was so, so, so hard for me. Erica, your post today resonated with me in so many ways because I really struggled um, with my identity of just being, a, I can't say just, but being a stay at home mom that was really, really tough for me. So anyway, side story. So I didn't even buy anything from Heather's party. I just immediately messaged Erica and I was like, tell me about this business. <laughs> um, and she did, she gave, I was like, what's in the starter kit? And back then the starter kit was like either 400 and then there was a tier for 700 and there was like seven god awful pieces in there. I think I only own two of them still. And you were lucky if you got your size. They're like, we'll do our best to get you your size, but you probably won't get it. Um, it was a very, very different ball game. I'm so jealous that there are gift cards now. And like for the most part, pretty decent. Well, let's say pretty bomb ass kits, right? Like they're pretty stellar to start your business. So. I just on a whim, I thought about it. I thought about it. I thought about it. I told my husband, Hey, there's this like brand new active wear company coming out. I love to work out. All of my friends kind of work out. A lot of people I know are on Lululemon. This girl that I don't even know is saying, yeah, it's like basically like Lululemon. Um, so I was like, you know, what do I have to lose at the end of the day? I will have active wear, which I'm going to buy anyway. I might as well just try something. So I, didn't even reach out to Erica. I just joined. <laughs> and then I get a message from her and she's like, uh, holy crap. Like you just did it. And I was like, yeah, like I figured why not. So I watched, I watched and I watched and I took notes and I studied everything that I could for a solid week. And then beginning of October, I was ready to launch. I felt like I knew what I was going to do. I'd watched Erica. I had watched her upline. I'm like, I'm ready to do this. So I do exactly what um, I encourage my downline to do. I throw out a post telling about my new adventure and I get an amazing response, you guys. I had like 45 people say, heck yeah, I want to check out what this is. So stellar, like right from the get-go, I'm like, all right, Erica, has double ranked right away within two weeks of her business. I have 45 people interested already in my network that want to know what I'm doing. So I launched, I put my heart and soul into it. I went live for the first time and oh my gosh, you guys, I like cried through it. I was so nervous and anxious, like terrified, like just shaking. Um, mind you, I had never even taken a selfie before any of this. And, and backstory, I also have zero experience in direct sales. My degree and profession is as a mental health therapist. So totally outside of my comfort zone, but I'm like, screw it. Like, what do I have to lose? And now I have all this added motivation because people around me are having success and everybody wants to know what I'm doing. Throw my launch party, do as best as I could. A little bit of a bummer in there, our inventory wasn't there, but I was like, screw it. Like everyone else is still having success. People are surely going to want this. And you know what happened? I had two sales and one was from my mom. She still hasn't opened those leggings. Hey, Amy, I had to mute you. There was a bunch of other people talking. Can you unmute yourself again? Sorry. You said it was from your mom. <laughs> my first order was from my mom. And she still has not to this day opened those leggings or tried them on. <laughs> and the second was from a girl who won a $25 gift card. So needless to say, my launch was a total bust. I get on my first team call 
Erica, I don't think you were on it. I think Jesse led it because I think you were traveling across country. And I was on at the YMCA and I'm on the stepper on this team call and um, the woman running it was talking about setting goals and yada yada. And I just, I unleashed on her. I just was so upset. I'm, How can you have goals when we don't have inventory to sell? Now, I don't know how long each of y'all have been here, but if you ever think that we've had inventory issues in the last year and a half, you have no idea what 2018 looked like. And I've heard it was even way worse before I started. Like insane. There was not a single black legging and not a single bomber bra. Like we had like these hideous only striped leggings that were like just really, really bright colors. And maybe you can't call them hideous, but like colors that maybe someone trying it for the first time probably is not going to go for. <laughs> Erica, you know, you sold all of those off because <laughs> they were terrible. Um, so I'm just bawling and she's like, well, a goal is a measurable. And I just like, I know what a goal is. I'm a therapist. And then just lost it. So <laughs> I had to sit back and really ask myself at this time, am I even meant to do this? And I'm going to tell you this. That's not the only time I have asked myself those questions, that question. And I guarantee most of you at some point have probably thought the same thing. So every time I get to that place, the first thing that I do honestly is I pray about it. And I literally ask God, like if I, if this is causing me this much stress, like, please tell me if I'm not meant to do this, give me that sign. I need to know, like life is short. Just let me know give me that sign. And literally every single time, you guys, this is insane. Something crazy happens to validate why I should stay. And right after that experience, I had two of my high school friends reach out to me, God bless their souls, because this doesn't happen for everybody. Um, and they were just so, so sweet. Um, they reached out to me and offered to host a party for me. Okay, great. Like my launch was a bust. And it's weird kind of promoting yourself. I, that was very uncomfortable for me, but I could do this for someone else easily. Like, let's do this. So throw my first party. It was not bad. I got to a $600 party and like, hey, that was way better than my launch, stellar. Go to set my second party. Um, and whew, this is gonna be the part that I'd get emotional, but my dad died unexpectedly in his sleep. Um, this was the beginning of November. Um, and obviously, Zaya had to take a back seat. But these <laughs> incredible ladies that I didn't even know, um, I, I reached out to Erica and I just said, hey, just so you know, like, I'm probably not going to be involved in Zaya this, um, this month because my dad died. And um, I just kind of left it at that. Like, I don't like being vulnerable with other people. Um, even though I'm a therapist and I tell people how important that is. <laughs> I just don't. So um, Erica um, coordinated and with all the other ladies in our very small team at that time. And they were so sweet and they sent care packages and dinner and toys for my kiddos. And it was just super, super sweet. Um, <clears throat> So I'm gonna fast forward that because I'm uncomfortable staying there. <laughs> um, come December, we did a um, team mega party um, that Erica and I think Cassidy mostly led. It was either Cassidy or, um, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, and we could invite 10 people and I did just something random and I threw out a random post to my neighborhood to see if somebody would be interested in learning a little bit about Zaya um, and what we had, and I connected with a complete stranger. And fast forward that, let's talk about that beginning of 2019. February of 2019, they announced that we could earn a trip to the Dominican Republic, which none of us went on because it was changed to Cabo <laughs> um, halfway through. But I remember, 
our lovely fearless leader Erica being like, okay, guys, this trip is on. We are all going. Here is how you do this, <laughs> right? Like the Erica would give it pumping everyone up. She's going. Like we all know Erica is going to the Dominican. And all I could think about was, <clears throat> okay, I have no reps under me. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna hit a three by 2,500. And I'm I'm a rep. I haven't even rank advanced. Like how, yeah, right, Erica. Like how do, no way. But I really wanted to go. Like who doesn't wanna go on a freaking trip, right? Um, so I just started doing things that I was afraid to do before. I was reaching out to these random people um, that I had met from my neighborhood party um, and asking them, hey, like, will you host a party for me? I was doing incentives of with my friends. My friends locally wouldn't even host a party with me, but I was like, hey, dude, I will give you a pair of leggings to try on. If you like this and you get to a thousand dollars, I'll give them to you for free. Like I had to bribe people initially, I feel like. Um, and from there and just trying and working my tail end off to do things that were uncomfortable for me, I um, started meeting the right people. And I think sometimes that's a hard part is like, we don't, we don't know where to go from there, but it didn't, I, I don't know that that always matters because we don't know who those right people are initially. And come February, which is like my fifth month in, I finally start recruiting and I, I do it okay. I got two reps that month. One of who is my amazing um, leader and one of my amazing friends, Marissa Smith. Now, for those of you who don't know my girl, Marissa, um, she is a baller. She had a ton of past experience in direct sales, um, and she really is one of the most intelligent, crafty, just amazing human beings um, that I know that a lot of people want to be around and they want to know what she's doing. Um, and so I actually was like, okay, once Marissa started saying, hey, like, what's this all about? And I was like, hey, girl, so weird. I've been meaning to reach out to you. I, oh, too bad that other company already has you. Um, but she wanted to host a party. So like, cool. When Marissa wanted to host a party, she had 76 people want to attend. So homegirl said, hey, you know, like, maybe I should look into the Zaya thing too. <laughs> Fast forward some of that. Um, so by the end of February, I had finally double ranked. Okay, before their trip was announced, no rank. By the time the first month, I had double ranked, you guys. Like, holy crap, that is a huge self-esteem boost. By the end of the incentive thing, I had quadruple ranked to senior director um, and have now a team of nine people. Like, holy crap but it took me five months of growing and learning and getting a lot of no's to start getting that ball rolling, okay? The first quarter is super important. So take where you're at right now and challenge yourself to go a little bit farther, stretch a little bit deeper. Now, what I was doing at that time, I'm doing some stuff way harder I feel like now and like stretch myself so much more but you know what guys like if we we're to compare ourselves with other people like we hear this all of the time right comparison is joy's thief of all joy or something like that right <laughs> I said it wrong <laughs> shut up <laughs> I see you laughing but I needed that time to grow. I hadn't had previous experience in direct sales. I didn't have a network. I didn't have um, that confidence to put myself out there, but I had to allow myself some of that time to kind of fall on my face, to make mistakes, to not have, like, it didn't all happen for me. And for some of the people that started around me, it had. And should I have let that comparison stop me, like I would not be where I am at today. And so I want to remind each and every one of you of not to compare that person next to you because you don't know their story. You don't know where they are in their journey and, and their growth. Even though you might, they might've started after you, 
they could have already grown in so many different ways that you already need to. And that's what I, I needed that. And I didn't know that until hindsight. My husband gave me really, really, really good advice when I was stuck um, in those really low spots the first five months. Um, actually, I think he said it in like month two or three. He said, you know what? Like, go for it. Be consistent, stretch yourself and give it a solid six months. And if after six months you've put all of your time and your energy, not all your time, but you put that energy, you stretch yourself and you don't like it, don't do it. And so I, that stuck with me of like, okay, like I have this option to quit. Like I, I don't have to be here if I don't want to. And just giving myself that option, I think even pushed me a little bit farther. Okay, so dun, 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 dun. let's fast forward to Cabo. Holy poop, you guys. Another trip incentive has been announced. We're going to freaking Mexico, going back to Mexico, just a different part. I have to tell you, Cabo was my first experience with the company. Um, I chose not to go to the big summit that was prior to that. Um, Cause in my mind, I'm like, Ugh, that's a lot of money. Like, why would I spend that kind of money to go on something? I just did not understand why people would do that. Um, and I just was not willing to, but I was definitely willing to go to Cabo. Um, and you guys, I have to tell you something. Um, I've learned the hard way pretty much most of my life, but um, not obviously is Cabo amazing because I got to be on vacation, but to be surrounded by the community, to meet people that you have never met in person and have them meet your significant others or your mom or whoever they chose to bring, to be in the presence of corporate um, change my business for me. I felt more connected than ever. And you know, um, I heard, was actually on a call yesterday and one of the things that um, the speaker talked about is how connection with people keep people like going. We, tr if we have that connection, we trust people. Um, and because I feel like I have now a connection with corporate, when shit goes wrong with our website or inventory or whatever, it was like the first, my first thought is never, oh, what is corporate doing? How can they not get their craft together? Because I know, and I feel like, I feel the CEO's hearts. Like I know if we're frustrated, they're on that other end going, oh my gosh, this has got to be so awful for our reps. And they're doing everything and calling everybody to get it done because I've met these people and they care about us, you guys. They really, really do. But seriously, Back to Cabo. Uh, first day working out, Zach Bradley. I'm on the treadmill. I look behind me and the, I look behind me, Zach Bradley's on the elliptical and I almost pooped myself. Then <clears throat> I'm on the beach. Brenda's down there and her daughter's getting her hair braided and I wanted to get my hair braided. So I was chatting with her design and I was like, hey girl, like, you know what I would love? I would love a camo boyfriend hoodie with the matching little girls thing. Still hasn't come up. I think I need to bring it back up to her. But she's like, that's a really good idea um, in the Brenda way that, <laughs> that she would. But like, it was the coolest experience to be that close to them. Because for me, they just felt before then on this pedestal of people that don't know us, you go to something like that and you're like, hey, these people know us, they care about us, and they are amazing, real people. So January 2020 rolls around. Can I just preface before I hop to, so Cabo was October, November, December happened. I'm just going to preface. I don't like November and December in this, in, the, in sales. Like I just, I don't have the same fire that third quarter as I do the first quarter. Um, and I think I'm just learning that about myself. And I kind of came to that realization today. Like it's hard. I don't, I just don't like it. I don't have the same, I don't think, I don't, I probably, my team probably feels that. I just, I'm focused on the holidays and slowing down and finishing a year, but damn it, come January, like I'm ready to go. And I'm telling you, it's what you do in this first quarter that makes the biggest difference in your business for this next, this next coming year. Okay. Because every year, um, I have been able to say by the end of December, I'm really glad of what I did and how I pushed myself those first three months. Um, because it was no small feat to hit um, 
the huge accomplishment of Doubles Eye Executive, but how I even got there, I started last year as a senior director, you guys. I had a pretty good sized team, but I also had to learn a lot then because I talk about growth. I had to learn a lot about how to um, lead a team. I was really good at building those relationships and my team's really pretty close. Um, we spent a lot of time talking, but I did not know how to lead them well. And so that was something I really stretched myself. But guess what? January last year, they announced we're going to Jamaica. Another trip that didn't happen. <laughs> but I was like, dang it, I got to go to Jamaica. So what do you do? The three by 2,500 came back, you guys. That three by 2,500 is freaking hard to hit. I don't care who you are, Erica, like, it's hard. Like I'm looking at it right now. I'm going to, all right, I'm just going to start chipping away at this because I'm going to do it. But from December, oh, I don't know what my computer is doing. From December to May, I pushed and I pushed and I pushed. And from, I hit the three by 2,500, five out of six months, which is insane for me. That is not my typical, um, but because of that consistency every single month, I saw huge, huge gains in my team. And that, um, not only just for my frontline, but they were building teams as well. Obviously we went through a pandemic. We had huge, huge growth. Like a lot of things happened in place, but I really truly believe that so much of that is from being consistent, stretching yourself when you're not comfortable um, and just keeping with it. Because there were so many times in this business, you guys, where I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> but that stupid little voice, that's not so stupid. Even when I would pray, like, all right, like, if this isn't for me, God, like, just take it. And he hasn't yet. And I don't feel like it's going to happen anytime soon. So... Um, oh, a couple things too. So what I did different this past year to grow, because we're talking about growth, there's a lot of growth that had to happen from 2018 to 2019, 2019 to 2020. Um, but last year was setting less limits. For me, um, if I had a thousand MPV, like I was happy with that. <clears throat> that's That was my goal. And that's great. And if that's your goal, that's really great too. But by this being my second or year and a half in, Erica's like, hey girl, like you want to start maybe shooting for like 2,500? <laughs> it's just an idea. Um, so I started setting less. Yeah, what, what, why, why stop at 1,000? I can do more than that. More networking. You guys, oh my gosh. Networking, connecting, connecting, connecting. Not only online, um, and I think I'm getting better and better online, but in everything that you do, and obviously this has been a hard year to connect in person, um, but a really a huge thing for me was I um, I joined a new gym and I joined a gym that they focus a lot on community, a lot of group work. And I started talking to people, um, not just putting my headphones in and leaving, but like talking to people and building relationships and setting play dates. Um, and from there, I literally my entire gym right now, where's Zaya? Like they all do. But when I walked in, zero did. But it wasn't from being weird and salesy and throwing it out there. It was by building connections. And then, hey, I really like your leggings. And then, hey, we should go to the park. Hey, do you want to do a party? And then that person wants to do a party. And, then, and you know how all that goes. So connecting. The last thing that I changed about last year that was a big game changer for me as well is personal development. And I know you all hear Erica say this all of the time, but we can hustle. We can be on our phones 24 hours a day and looking for that next day and looking for that next connection, whatever that looks like. But if we don't take the time, kind of like you guys are doing right now, like being on these trainings is a real, is really awesome. And I'm really, really humbled by each and every one of you that are here. Um, and, but kudos also to you for like taking that time for yourself. Um, I started more personal development. I got on the calls. I got on the trainings. I started reading some of the books. Um, and it's important for so many different reasons because when we're in the constant grind and um, having to like feel like we need the next sale, we need the next party, we need to do message, 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 like we burn out. Um, and then one of the really awesome things about personal development is 
it removes some of those mental roadblocks that we start to have. Um, and it promotes a lot of creativity. I can't tell you like after reading a certain chapter that I would all of a sudden just be in the shower and a new idea that I didn't like, it would never have thought of popped up um, because it allowed that creativity. I allowed my brain to take rest and think of something else. Um, so I'm looking at my notes and like, what have I missed? <laughs> all right, so it's January 5th, you guys. We have a new first quarter. And for me, I wanna be able to look at the end of this year and I wanna be proud of myself for how well I pushed myself this first quarter. Because I'm telling you, it's what we do in these first three months that really, I think, dictate what happens to the rest of the year. So, who wants to go to Mexico? <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> um, so, in summary, the things that I have learned that I would highly advise each and every one of you learn from my mistakes is one, don't be afraid to set goals. You guys, I never set goals until I hit double Zaya. I literally even told my team, I said, I'm putting it out there. I'm being vulnerable. You guys, I'm shooting for a really big rank and I might not hit it. There's a really, really, really good chance I won't hit it. Um, but I was afraid to set goals because I was afraid of failing. And it was just such a terrible mindset. Was set goals. You will be happy with yourself when you do, because you're going to push harder. You're going to shoot, like you're going to have a vision for it. I didn't have visions for a long time. Use your upline. Um, I also made this mistake a lot. I have an insane, amazing upline, as y'all have probably heard it if you were here at the beginning. Erica is my direct upline and I rarely used her or reached out to her to fault of my own. Like I miss on so much wisdom and help because I was terrified to use your upline. And if it's not, not your upline, reach out to other people on this team, make connections on, on this team. Like that's what will keep us together. That will, that's what's going to help you feel like you're not on this island. Reach out to those next to you. Um, personal develop is incredibly important, like I just mentioned. Um, and if you're a leader on the team, or if you have a team of just one, be sure to lead by example. And what I mean by that is, if I'm asking my team to do things, I sure as heck better be willing to do those things myself. Um, I read a statistic that the rule of thumb is that your team will on average do half of what you do, which is actually probably pretty accurate because I see sometimes Erica's numbers and I'm like, damn, I'm literally half her numbers like every time because she kills it. She leads by example. She shows up for the training. Erica didn't have to be on this call. She's not going to learn from anything, but you know what? She's here. She showed up. She wants to show everyone on her team that she's invested. I don't always want to be on every call either, you guys. I don't have time. I'm tired. Holy crap. Like it's nine o'clock my time. It's bedtime, y'all. But your team sees you. They see when you're commenting. They see when you're on trainings. And even if it's that team of one, make sure that you're leading by example. So back to that first question for y'all. When it comes to the game of life, do you all think it's better or more beneficial to play the game of chess or to play the game of Tetris? Chess, Tetris. There's good arguments for both. Tetris, 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 no clue. <laughs> Just Tetris, hopefully Tetris. <laughs> Someone has poop. <laughs> oh no, Brienne, I'm so sorry. Tetris, Tetris, Jess. <laughs> Checkers. <laughs> you guys are awesome. 
so for me, if I'm going to be truthful and honest, I think the times that I would get in my head or have those roadblocks, I was playing chess because I kept wanting to predict the move that the world would give me and I would be stifled in fear. When truthfully, when I started playing Tetris and you know what, like just kept the game going because that's how Tetris goes. And even though sometimes those blocks fit awkwardly, eventually you keep building to smooth it all out. And it works itself out. And that is the game of life to keep playing and not be stifled by that. So that's my theory. So I hope some of this was helpful for you guys. Um, I hope some of you all can relate. I think um, Erica really wanted me to speak because for this call in particular to see if, to reach out to those who can relate to me, like I am flabbergasted and floored by people who find immediate success. Like I, I cannot relate to you. <laughs> Um, there's so many of you wonderful, beautiful, such talented individuals on this team and you blow my mind. Um, but I also know that, hey, like you had some growth when you started, girl, like you are awesome. Um, and guess what, guys? None of us are done growing. None of us. We got to keep going um, and keep growing. So um, I appreciate you all. Thank you all for all the love. If anybody ever has any questions or you want to reach out to me personally um, and or anything, please feel free to Facebook message me, to friend request me. I would love to meet those of you who I have not met yet. So, all right, I rambled on for long enough. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.